And now, Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Roma Wines presents... Suspense. Tonight, Roma Wines bring you Mr. Vincent Price and Mr. Lloyd Nolan as stars of Hunting Trip, a suspense play produced, edited, and directed for Roma Wines by William Spear. Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live, to your happiness in entertaining guests, to your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now, a glass full would be very pleasant, as Roma Wines bring you Lloyd Noland and Vincent Price in a remarkable tale of... Suspense! It began with just a little hunting trip for the two of us, Eric and me. I hadn't seen Eric for several months, not be- since before Karen died, in fact. When I bumped into him at the club, he suggested that we run up to his cabin in the mountains for a few days, grab a bit of fresh air and relaxation, see if we couldn't bag ourselves a moose or a deer. And yet, almost at the outset, I had an uncanny feeling about that trip. <laughs> I suppose, actually, it was the night and the setting. It was the blackest night I'd ever seen. We'd left all humankind behind us. There was no moon. There was only blackness, the kind that seemed to be all enveloping, as though there was nothing outside our car but blackness. No road, no forest, no mountains. Well, I'd admit I was nervous. I was boring my feet into the floorboard of the car, as though somehow that would help. (laughs) What are you laughing at? You, Stan. You don't look as though you're having a very good time. Well, I'm not. I, frankly, shouldn't you be driving a little bit slower? Why? Why? Good heavens, Eric, if you make just one little slip of the wheel, we're, we're done for, that's so all. I doubt if they'd ever even find us down in those canyons. <laughs> Nonsense. I know every crook and turn in this road. Oh, yeah? I don't think you're much of an outdoors man. Stan. Well, maybe not. I love this kind of country in the daytime, but I'll confess I'm not so keen on it at night. I don't like what I can't see. <laughs> Funny, I'm just the opposite. There's, well, there's a challenge in the darkness that stimulates my senses. Mm. It's exhilarating. It stirs my imagination. Well, sure, I suppose it would. But I'm not equipped to grapple with the mysteries of the universe. <laughs> Stan, you're much too modest. You always were. You've gotten out of life pretty much what you wanted, haven't you? Well, yes, I suppose so. Now, then don't always be belittling yourself. It's an effective technique, Stan, but I'm on to you. You're as clever as the next fellow your own way. I sat back and tried to relax. Things weren't quite as Eric had pictured them. I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth, as they say. Eric had come up the hard way. I was average and soft. He was brilliant and hard. We'd known each other a long time, going to school together, being in love with the same girl, Karen. Karen. When I married her, he was my best man, and yet I didn't pretend to understand him. He was still pretty much of a stranger to me. I glanced over his way. He actually seemed to be enjoying himself. It crossed my mind that he was rather enjoying seeing me in a bit of a lather, too. Well, it's not far now, just around the next bend. Well, thank the Lord. (laughs) Well, am I amusing you again? (laughs) No, no. I was just thinking what a perfect spot this would be for a murder. A murder? Honestly, Eric, I believe that's all you think about. It is, almost. When I buy a newspaper, I read about murder the way you study the stock quotations. Murder is fascinating to me. I spend most of my time figuring out ways and means to commit murder. Now you're trying to sound like a mental case. Who knows? Perhaps I am. I have a mind. Well, here we are, old man. Yeah. You see, I've delivered you safe and sound, all in one piece. Eric's cabin was perched high on a rocky crag jutting out from the side of a mountain with one wall flush against a sheer drop. 
In front, there was a steep path leading down to a lake. I could hear the lapping of the waves. Eric fixed us something to eat, then went outside. And pretty soon, he came back in. Arm full of logs. His face was red and healthy. I don't think you like my place, Dan. Huh? Oh, yes, I do. Honestly, I'm just tired, I guess. Well, we'll turn in directly. Oh, thanks. Cigarette? Yes, thanks. I believe I will. I like it here. All the privacy in the world. Mm Mm-hmm. Say, Eric. Yes? Why do you read about murder? Why do you read about stocks and bonds? Well, because they interest me. It's my business. My business doesn't interest me. I read about murder because I'm interested in people. Murder is emotional. And when people are being emotional, you get to see more of them. Why are you so interested in people? Oh, I think I'm more curious than interested. Well, all right. Why so curious? It amuses me. I find out about people. I write down what I find out, and I write my impressions of how those people will react to a series of circumstances. It's a good way to get rid of one's inhibition. Sort of a frightening hobby. I think uh, stamp collecting is frightening. (laughs) You're too darn clever, Eric. Why too clever? Well, I mean you see through people. Well, what's wrong with that? Unless, of course, they uh, have something they want to hide. Oh, I suppose it's all right, if your friends don't mind. Do you? Mind? No, heavens no. Why should I? That's right. Why should you? Well, how about hitting the hay? We have to be up early. We'll only get a few hours sleep as it is. That suits me. You sleep in my study, Stan. Uh, The bed's in there is a bit more comfortable. I'll bunk out here on the couch. I had undressed and gotten into bed and was reaching over to put out the light on Eric's desk when my eyes fell on a stack of typewritten sheets. I wondered if they were the notes Eric had been speaking about. It was a strange mumbo-jumbo he'd written there, phrases he liked, single sentences describing people he'd met. There were a few clippings pasted on sheets of white paper, clippings describing murders, by strangulation, by pistol, by drowning, by poison. The full sheet was devoted to Karen. I hadn't realized how much he'd cared for her. His analysis was very kind, almost maudlin. He spoke of his shock at hearing of a suicide. He tried to reason it, to find causes. A small memo pad caught my eye, however. And on the last page, I saw my name carefully printed. I read it eagerly. I read Eric's arguments for not hating me because I had married Karen. I read Eric's cold analysis of my character. <laughs> not exactly flattering, but it was pretty accurate. And at the bottom of the page, newly written by the looks of it, and in Eric's own careful hand, I read Four Ways to Commit Murder By Strangulation By Pistol Bullet By Drowning By Poison For Suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you Vincent Price and Lloyd Nolan in Hunting Trip by Paul Bernard and Lee Horton. Roma Wine's presentation tonight in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Between the acts of Suspense, this is Ken Niles for Grand Estate Wines. Last night, a friend who entertains frequently told me how much he likes Grand Estate Wines. Those wines of outstanding excellence presented by Roma, America's greatest vintner. Here's what he said. Recently, Ken, I served Grand Estate wine to some very particular guests, people who really know wine. Their sincere praise for that wonderful fragrance and taste was certainly flattering to me as a host. Grand Estate wines are outstanding. Yes, to bring you this limited bottling of Grand Estate wines... Roma selected only the choicest juice-laden grapes from California's finest vineyards. Then at Roma's famed wineries, unmatched in winemaking resources, Grand Estate wines are patiently, skillfully guided to perfection. Necessary time and the age-old skill of Roma master vintners endow each Grand Estate wine with brilliant clarity, full fragrance, and mellow taste. So, whatever the occasion, you're sure to please all tastes 
with Grand Estate California Wines. Medium Sherry, Ruby Port, and Golden Muscatel for delightful entertaining. Grand Estate Burgundy and Sauterne for gracious dining. Remember the name, Grand Estate Wines by Roma, the crowning achievement of vintner skill. And now, Roma Wines bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Lloyd Nolan as Stan and Vincent Price as Eric in Hunting Trip, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. I suppose I slept that night, but it seemed as though I had only just dozed off when I heard the door open quietly. I opened one eye cautiously. It was still gray in the room, so I know I hadn't slept long. I was about to bo- open both eyes to save Eric the trouble of waking me when I thought, he hasn't come to wake me. My mind threw two words at me by strangulation. Before I had the chance to move, I felt his hands carefully on my throat. <laughs> Don't! Why, why, Stan, what's the matter? I thought for a minute that... Yes? I guess I must have been dreaming. Nightmare. Oh, you grabbed hold of my hands like you thought I was going to strangle you. Oh, did I? What's the matter? Have you got a guilty conscience? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess I have. What did you want, Eric? Time to get up. Oh, already? Yeah, that's right. I've got good news, too. I just spotted a likely-looking buck right across the lake when I went down for water. Oh, good, good. Well, I'll get breakfast going. As soon as you're ready. Yeah, I'll be right with you. Now, there's no rush. Take your time. Nice to have you here. Well, maybe it was the way that he'd said that as though he'd really meant it. For a minute, I was convinced that I'd let my imagination run away with me. And as for putting his hand on my throat, that was an accident. He'd been groping for my shoulder. And then the next minute, I was asking myself, was it an accident, though? Suppose I'd really been asleep. Suppose I hadn't grabbed his hands. I still didn't know what to think. Well, I dressed, and we sat down to breakfast. Oh, pass me your cup, will you, Stan? I'll, I'll give you some coffee. There you are. Thanks. Sugar coming up. No, no sugar for me, thanks. Well, Stan, when are you going to confess? What do you mean, confess? Or shall I drag it out of you? What are you driving at? Oh, come now. You're not going to play the adolescent schoolboy with me. I swear, I, I I'm don't... I'm referring to the lovely young woman you've been seen dining with and taking to the theater. Oh, oh, oh you mean Marcia. Is that her name? Yes, yes. Well, go on. Where did you meet her? How? When? Is she wealthy? Is she as beautiful <laughs> as they say she is? Come on. Let's have the sort of details. No, Eric, you're, you're barking up the wrong tree. Am I? Oh, I'll admit I've taken around occasionally, but nothing like that. Marcia, do I know her? No, I don't believe you do. Isn't her last name Jenkins? Yes. Oh, of course I know her. That is, I met her. Well, don't you remember? You introduced me to her yourself. Oh, oh, did I? Yes, don't you remember? I ran into you at Silver's. You were buying perfume, and she was helping you select it for Karen. Remember? Oh, oh, yes, yes. Now that you recall it, More I... coffee? Uh, yeah, no sugar. Well, when we got to the lake, we bailed out the boat, loaded it, and pushed it out into the fog. It was still half light when we reached the other side, so we sat in the boat and lighted cigarettes, waited for the sun to come up. We'd been sitting there, just smoking, not saying anything, when he suddenly turned to me and said, You say that she'd been ill? Uh... Oh, Karen. Yes. Yes, she'd been ill for some time, Eric. So she killed herself. Yes. There was an inquest, of course. Well, yes, of course. Why do you ask? Look at that sun. Did you ever see such color? Four ways to commit murder. I'd almost forgotten about Eric's hands on my throat. Now the incident jumped vividly back to my mind because now I knew that Eric had a reason. He looked away after he asked me about the inquest. He didn't answer me when I asked him why he wanted to know. Somewhere in that strange, dark corner of his mind, he was still obsessed by love for Karen, even though she was dead and gone. He thought that she'd still be alive and happy if 
she hadn't married me. My legs were weak when he motioned me out of the boat. A deer blew somewhere near us. We stopped. Hey, did you hear that? Yeah. Listen. It's moving west. Yeah. Stan, you work west, just about half a mile or so ahead of us. You'll come to a clearing. Mm -hmm. Take your stand there. Right. I'll strike north and west and then work toward the clearing. Good hunting. This is it, then, I thought. He'll hide somewhere along the way to the clearing and shoot me in the back. Now that I knew what to expect, I felt somewhat relieved. At least I'd be ready for him. Nothing happened until I'd nearly reached the clearing. And then I got the feeling that someone was walking with me, timing his steps with mine. I stopped. and listened. I don't know how long I stood there. My rifle gripped in my hands. But suddenly, instinctively, I wheeled around. A shot whistled over my head. Then I saw a buck running across the clearing. He'd shot at me and missed. Well, two can play at that game, I thought. The next shot would be mine. I wouldn't miss. I dropped to my knees watching the brush for him. Then all of a sudden, I saw him running toward me, right out in the open. I started to raise my rifle, but I couldn't. I couldn't kill a man that way in cold blood. Dan, Dan, did I hit you? I can't find you. Now I... hold on a minute, old son. Let's well... not lose our heads. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, of course, but I had no idea you were to take stand in the clearing, so I naturally assumed you were there. I, I don't know what I can say. Well, it... maybe it was my fault. I don't know. Anyway, let's forget. It. But I, 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 I said let's skip it. I stuck close to Eric after that. I gave no more opportunity for a shooting accident. It was dusk when we hunted, headed back toward the cabin. We didn't get our buck, not that I cared, and I'm sure Eric didn't. He was after a different game. Then I saw a boat on the beach. By drowning. Here we were alone. I couldn't refuse to get in the boat with him. There was no other way of getting back to the cabin. I could feel the perspiration trickling down my ribs. I stumbled in the underbrush. Easy, easy now. Hey, it's too bad we didn't bag that fella. Oh, huh, what? That buck. Better luck tomorrow, maybe. Yeah, better luck tomorrow. You seem preoccupied, Stan. Do I? Yes, I have the ghastly feeling that I'm failing you as a host. I don't think you're having a very good time. I, I think this is a marvelous country, Eric. <laughs> You've exercised phenomenal restraint, old son. What do you mean? About expressing your admiration for it. I'd never have suspected that you liked it so much. That remark called for some sort of an answer, but I wasn't equal to it. Fortunately, I was spared the necessity. We reached the lake and the boat then... We tossed our guns into it. Eric started to push out to the shore. Hop in, Stan. Easy does it now. Hang on to the oars, will you, while I climb in? Uh -oh. All set? All set. Splendid. Here, now, you better let me row. I know this lake. There's some treacherous spots in it. What do you mean? Oh, some nasty boulders sticking up. Some of them that aren't easy to spot. Come too close to the surface for comfort. I see. If we were to hit one of them, we'd turn over in a hurry. You don't swim, do you, Stan? You know darn well I don't. Oh, that's a shame. It's a mistake not to learn to swim, don't you think? What happened after that was a nightmare. He rode. I sat there. Paralyzed. I couldn't move. I couldn't think. I knew, I knew I should do something, but what? I stared at the water till I was blind, looking for rocks. Eric's face was a blur. He just smiled, rode, rode and talked. 
His voice sounded hollow and unreal. You're shaking, Stan. Is something wrong? This lake's plenty deep. Lots of fish in it, too. Maybe we can do a little fishing. He stopped suddenly. He'd seen something in the water. He turned around, pulled hard on the oars. We'd reached the spot he knew it. And then... No! No, Eric! Eric, for the love of God! Eric! When I came up, Eric was there in the water near me. He didn't speak. He just grinned. And then I saw his face above mine, grinning. I saw him raise his face to strike me, and that's the last I remember. When I came to, I was lying on the beach, and Eric was standing over me, smiling. Well, hello. How are you feeling? I... Okay, I guess. Say, you're a tough customer to rescue, old son. You put up quite a fight. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought no, that maybe... don't try to talk now. You've had a pretty bad time. Take it easy. Well, it was all clear to me then. Eric had saved my life. It had been accidental. The shot, the boat turning over. He didn't want to kill me. A man doesn't save you from drowning when he wants you dead. But it had all been my imagination, a nightmare. Oh, the relief that flowed through my body was almost too much for me. It would... Well, there aren't words to express how I felt. A little later, Eric helped me up to my cabin and I stretched out on the couch... Eric went to the kitchen to fix hot coffee and soup. He brought the coffee in first, pulled up the coffee table close to me, and poured us each out a cupful. Ah, uh, there you are. Get some of that into you, and you'll feel different. Oh, thanks. I'll be back in a second. Soup's coming right up. Hey, uh, Stan, do you like to cook? Huh? I said, do you like to cook? You know, I do. I, I, well, I like to try different concoctions. Oh, not me. I'd starve to death if I had to cook for myself. Oh, man. This coffee hits the spot. Ah, I can use a little of that, too. It sure does warm the innards, doesn't it? Mm Mm-hmm. I got a little chill. Nothing like a cup of coffee, I always say. (laughs) That's what I always say, too, Stan. (laughs) Why didn't... Did I, say so? Did I say something funny? Am I amusing you again? <laughs> Immensely. Yeah. In fact, Stan, I think that's probably the funniest thing you ever said. Mm-hmm. How did you like it, Stan? Four ways to commit murder. You read it, of course. Well, you... yes, I, I, I couldn't tell you had, just as I intended you to. Were you frightened all day today? I don't understand. I... You didn't know, did you, that... I came to your engagement party to ask Karen to be my wife. I wasn't aware that you were throwing a party or that she had accepted you. Oh, good Lord. Perhaps you don't remember what I told you that night. You thought I was joking, but I meant every word I said. That I'd make you pay if you failed Karen, if you made her unhappy. But then all these years you would... Then you did bring me up here to... Murder you? You're so right, Stan. You pulled me out of the lake. You saved my life. (laughs) You are a dull-witted clown, aren't you, Stan? Don't you know me better than that? Did you think I'd kill you in in the manner of a homicidal moron? Oh, no, Stan. But you did take a shot at me. Oh, yes. That was the second way. The first way was by waking you up by the throat this morning. The boat tipping over was the third way. And now I suppose we've reached the fourth way. Your brilliance positively staggers me. You can't get away with it, Eric. Oh, yes, I can. I have. You see how intently I'm watching you? I'm waiting to see you fall. You're going to die, Stan, just as Karen died. What do you mean? In the coffee stand. That's right. (laughs) Your coffee's poisoned, just as you poisoned her coffee. Only yours is a slow poison. (laughs) Poetic justice, don't you think? You, 
You poisoned my coffee? Yes, I, I wore down your guard. I, I planned it so that by now you would trust me. You would <laughs> have faith in me. You, you poisoned uh, my coffee? <laughs> what if... What if you... <laughs> I didn't drink my coffee, uh, Eric. Uh, I changed cups with you. There was sugar in my cup, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't take sugar in my coffee, Eric. So I change cups with you. I, I didn't mean to do it, Eric, but... Ah, I don't like sugar in my coffee. So you see, I, I didn't kill Eric, really. <laughs> he killed himself accidentally, but but I wish he had killed me. He had a good reason to, because somehow he knew about Karen, about how I killed Karen, by putting poison in her coffee that morning, and I watched her die, the same way that I watched Eric die. I'm tired now. I don't want to talk anymore. You do whatever you want with me. Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines. R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. And now, our two distinguished stars, Lloyd Nolan and Vincent Price, are returning for a curtain call with William Spear, our producer-director of Suspense. Mr. Spear is carrying two large gift baskets of Grand Estate California wines. Lloyd and Vincent, and Vincent and Lloyd, <laughs> just to keep the billing straight, uh, we want you each to have a basket of these Grand Estate wines with our compliments for a thrilling performance. Oh, hey, thank you, Bill. Hey, this is quite a selection. It certainly is. My thanks, too, Bill. Well, there, there must be a Grand Estate wine for every occasion here. I guess there is, isn't there, Ken? Well, there is indeed, Bill. Even my favorite, Grand Estate Medium Sherry. A truly versatile wine, Grand Estate Medium Sherry is delicious as an aperitif before dinner. Delightful for afternoon or evening parties, too. And, of course, like all Grand Estate wines by Roma, medium sherry possesses the brilliant clarity, full fragrance, and mellow taste that distinguish truly great wines. That sounds wonderful. Well, yes, Mr. Nolan, and you can be sure that any Grand Estate wine you serve represents the ultimate in wine goodness, the crowning achievement of vintner skill. That's why Grand Estate wines presented by Roma the greatest name in wine, are the choice of discriminating wine users everywhere. Well put, Ken. Uh, Vincent, what's new and startling over on the 20th Century Fox lot? Well, they're pretty excited about Daryl Zanuck's film version of Mom's The Razor's Edge, uh -huh. which has just finished up shooting. And uh, I guess the picture that they like best among the current releases is Claudia and David. Uh-huh. You're on loan out just now, away from the home lot, aren't you, Vincent? That's right, Bill. And Lloyd is, too. Oh. Yes, yes, sir. I will be in a couple of weeks. Right now, I'm just loafing, grabbed a little fishing, took a hunting trip up north. Uh, you wouldn't want to go on a hunting trip with me, <laughs> would you, Lloyd? No, thanks. I had plenty of that tonight on suspense. Uh, oh, Bill, who's on the show next Thursday? It's uh, Dane Clark in a suspense play about a gunsel, a professional murderer who doesn't know he has any emotions until he finds himself falling in love with the wife of a man he's killed. Sounds wonderful. Hey, we'll be listening, eh, Lloyd? Oh, yes, sure thing. Swell. Well, then, if you two will relieve me of these baskets of Grand Estate wines before my arms give way and there's a loud crash. <laughs> Thanks again, Bill. <laughs> well, good night. Good night. Next Thursday, same time, listen to Dane Clark on Suspense. Presented by Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California.